I would invite my friends over to play Matchboxes in the Dirt. I started to buying toy Batmobiles and I just wanted this version and I realized with Star Cars I was doing the exact same thing. I was just like, bring your toy over, let's play with it in the dirt, drive it around in circles. <laughs> Here's Green Lantern. <laughs> Alfred, get me everything I need. I'm not planning on growing up. Getting old is not optional, but growing up is. <laughs> By the time she sees them, they're like, get the camera out! <laughs> I'm Nate Truman, and I run the website StarCarCentral.com. Obviously grew up as a child of television, uh, watched way too much TV as a kid, and my mom would say, do you think they're going to pay you to watch television when you grow up? Uh, and that's pretty much what I do. <laughs> I get paid to watch TV. Uh, I make television. I fell in love with that car when I was a little kid, uh, watching it the first time, and then the adult in me started saying, I'm going to go get that car. I'm going to find at least we'll find out where they were. And that was the beginning of the quest. Uh, I was producing, uh, segment producing a show called Will Schreiner Show. The Batmobile pulled in, and for the first time I ever saw Channel 5, people who didn't look twice at a president or Michael Jackson or some big star suddenly came running with a camera and like, I gotta get a picture of the Batmobile, the Batmobile's here. But I just wanted to sit in it. They wanted the Batmobile to just pull away. Of course, the gate was open, and so we kept going and took it all the way around the block on Sunset Boulevard. And I really thought I would get over it. I'd sit in it and it'd be a 30-year-old prop and I'd be like, meh, not as cool as I thought it was. And uh, <clears throat> it looked beautiful and I just sat in it and, and a little switch went off in my head of, I gotta get me one of these. I'm gonna drive one of these. This is gonna be my car. I've owned a lot of movie cars. I've lot of, owned a lot of different TV and uh, famous cars. For me, just the design of this car from where the Ford Future came from, the double bubble, the future, uh, future look. I loved all those 60s uh, cars of tomorrow. But if you see pictures of the Futura, it looks like a dated 60s car. And what Barris did and his team to turn it into the Batmobile just made it such an iconic, timeless, uh, cool car. It's an interesting thing that not just for me, but for all star car people, is it starts with, hey, I could have Herbie the Love Bug, or I could have the Jurassic Park Jeep. It starts very innocently. You don't know what you're getting into. One time I actually put a number on it and I got uh, people yelling at me of like, that's impossible. It seemed like a lot. But from 1996, 97 to 2003, I was out in this garage about anywhere between three and 10 hours a day, uh, just tinkering away. Two things had to be important to me. That one, it had to be on street legal. And the other thing is, I was taking it out of the package. I didn't need a you know, 15, 20 thousand dollar paint job on the car. I was like, I'm gonna bang this up, I'm gonna drive it, I'm gonna bump it into things, I'm gonna put it into parades. So uh, my, my first rule was, I'm not gonna get freaked out about it if it gets a nick or a ding on it. I wonder sometimes what people think, you know, when they're just driving and they all of a sudden see a Batmobile turn in front of them or make a U-turn in front of them. They just stare and they stare and say, oh shit. What the hell is a Batmobile doing on my, on my street? Come on, Batmobile! <laughs> Thanks. Everybody loves this car. You can be cruising down Sunset with a hundred people taking pictures of you, but no matter what, you are still Batman when you're driving this car. And you're 1960s Batman, so you don't really have to be perfectly in shape. You can actually have a little bit of a gut and you're still Batman. You don't know who I am. Don't tell anybody. Uh, in the show, Movie Magic and all would take a single button and change the label every time they had a button. But Nate wanted realistic believability in all the switches and all the functions that the car has, so he would find a new space for a switch and label it appropriately for the, for the uh, gadget that Batman would have. So the actual Batmobile that was in the show may not have as many switches, but Nate has a switch for every single gadget that Batman would have had. And that was his own little creative addition to the car just to make sure that it's that much more believable as a real life car and not just a movie prop. I finished the car in about 2003. I'd just driven it around, really. I hadn't taken it to anything event. And I decided, I'll take it to a car show. I went for a walk just through all these, there was over 3,000 cars there. I realized that it wasn't really a car show thing. It was more of a special event. We started doing charities 
and it is the most rewarding uh, part of having one of these cars uh, to see to make the day of a kid whose life is not going that great we do a lot of uh, children's hospital events and make-a-wish events um, we go to a lot of children's charities for autism and down syndrome and and a lot of these people's lives you know the bright spots are much fewer and far between and to watch somebody who who is always on orange alert or low level alert to just have their face just transform and they become that 10 year old. They just, it's just like seeing a movie star in person. It's like, that's the Batmobile. That's like, I remember that car. I never thought I'd even see it in person. Fans are all over the world. I know of very rich guy in uh, Kuwait that has a Michael Keaton Batmobile with a purple flame job on it. Uh, there are General Lees in Iraq, uh, Knight Rider cars um, in, in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Uh, the, the influence that American pop culture has had around the world is, uh, is pretty, pretty intense. It has caught on around the world as far as people figure out these are fun to have in a pile. The best part about Star Cars is really the people I've got out of it. What I didn't realize was two things. One, I was really collecting friends. But also, even though the, the car was different, the story was very similar. Uh, at some point in their childhood, they'd seen a car, and that was their dream car, just like this was for me. That moment, that clarity of like, this is super cool, this is above and beyond anything I've seen before, made a connection with them and they took it a step further. Instead of just going, I really enjoyed that, they're like, I want that again. I want to go find that car, I want that feeling again. I want to be able to drive it. I want to be closer to that particular uh, show or movie. I'm less interested now in finding a new car than I am in hearing somebody's story and getting a new friend. The line I used to use, it doesn't work anymore, my wife was, how many Batmobiles do you need? And I would just say, just one more. <laughs> and that was, how many cars do you need? Just one more, just, uh, just one more. I have to admit, I'm, I'm old and I still have fun moving <laughs> matchboxes around and rolling them back and forth. So, yeah, some things never change. <laughs>